Well, the scene has been set for us. We have our first guest in the studio, Al-Haji Garbashi, who joins us. He's the President's Senior Special Assistant on Media and Publicity. You're welcome to Sunrise Daily. Thank you for having me. Well, let's quickly look at the matter right now. We can see that there is an internally displaced person situation being created in Kaduna, Kaduna as a result of the crisis that has been on there for a while. Are there any plans, say from the federal level for instance, to reassure the people who have fled their homes uh, that you know, it's, it's getting better and they can return? Uh, government has uh, intensified a lot of activities. You know that as we speak now, there are ongoing efforts to establish uh, two military battalions, one in Kachia, one in Zangon uh, There are military surveillance uh, flights now. Air Force is undertaking that. The Army has moved squadron, uh, the mobile police squadrons have been put in place. So a lot of effort is being, the entire place really is drenched with a lot of security. So many policemen that are there. The humanitarian situation is also being looked at. There are a lot of ongoing efforts. The federal government through the NEMA, National Emergency Management Agency. Management Agency is working with the state emergency management agency, SEMA, in order to bring relief to displaced persons. Because what we heard, I mean, what our correspondent reported there was that, uh, you know, groups and goodwill individuals are the ones giving support to the people who are, you know, who go to the primary schools every once in a week to go and pick up food items. There's no mention of NEMA there. Well, I assure you that NEMA is doing quite a lot. Uh, that is not to say that uh, Nigerians should uh, be asked to lay off. Uh, this is Nigeria. This is how we have cared for one another in all crisis situations, if you compare what is going on in southern Kaduna with the, that of the northeast, a lot of humanitarian effort is being driven by communities. As a matter of fact, 80% of displaced persons in the northeast are in communities. They have, they have been accommodated by members of communities, not uh, in IDP camps. So we have a way of caring for one another. It's a good thing that fellow citizens are, are doing this. But uh, I assure you that on the uh, direction of the president, NEMA was specifically directed to go into southern Kaduna in partnership with SEMA in Kaduna, evaluate the situation, assess needs, and go in with, with the support that is needed. It's unclear whether or not, you know, because you just talked about the battalion that has been, uh, that the plans are underway to set up, I think, is it a battalion or two in Kaduna there? Mm -hmm. But it's unclear whether that has had any effect on the people who continue to perpetrate this evil. Because uh, we understand that just yesterday there was another attack, I think, uh, on a community, and a 13-year-old was killed. So several people were injured, a lot of them taken to the hospitals. And it was seen that every now and again, almost every once a week now, we've had one sporadic attack after another, even after security men have been deployed to southern Kaduna. Even as it is, it's not as bad as it was. Uh, things are coming down. Uh, it would be assumptions to, to think that uh, you know, this crisis will just go away with a wave of the hand. It will take a while. Some rascally elements will, will stray, will perpetrate crime. Uh, but by and large, I think that uh, the, effect, the, 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 the measures put in place by government are having an effect. The reason we say this is because I, I recall having a conversation sometime after the president, uh, I think it was through your medium, released a statement uh, you know, on the situation in southern Kaduna, which a lot of people felt came late. And then secondly, uh, we understand that he, he directed the soldiers, he directed the military to see what it was that they could do to ensure that peace and security returned to Kaduna. But then... Uh, there were also questions, the people who were involved in this, we asked them if that felt, if they felt reassured by the statement of the president on that. And for a lot of them, they wanted the security men to be able to go into the bushes because they felt that that was where the marauders were. They also felt that, you know, it was difficult for them to go to their farms and that they didn't, they, they were saying that the bulk of the security men were mostly in town and on the roads, which is not where the attacks were happening. Well, again, we, we, we often make mistakes, uh, which is that uh, we leave uh, matters of security to police and to the army. Um, there is 
enormous responsibility that lies on all of us as members of our various uh, communities. Uh, and let me give this example because we just are having this nasty experience coming out of Borno that the, 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 the ch a chairman of a particular local government has been found complicit in Boko Haram. And he's been shielded, shielded by community members. And, and that's not how it should be because we as members, of, we have our own duty. If we leave these things to the police, to the army, we don't have enough policemen to put on every square inch of the soil of this country. Yes, I, I believe that there is more to do, there is not, no, no more that needs to be done. But communities must not shock their own responsibility dealing with the, some of this crisis. The question is, you know, how do they... Because these people have already been traumatized. They feel that most of the attacks have happened on their farm. Not that they feel they know. I mean, that's where most of the attacks have taken place. Mm -hmm. In some instances, entire villages are entered and you know, ransacked. Mm -hmm. And people are killed or maimed, as the, as the case might be. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they rely on the security agencies knowing that this, they are unarmed. And most of those people come in fully armed, you know, prepared to create maximum danger. When they cry to the security agencies, looking in the areas where they want them to look, would you say they're shirking their responsibility? Well, let me say that to be honest with you, uh, we must begin to look beyond the army and the police in resolving crises such as the one in Southern Kaduna. We have to rebuild uh, communities that have uh, social norms that have been destroyed. Look at the interesting thing that has evolved out of Plateau. Plateau was the epicenter of this crisis for some time. And, and, and the, the community seized the, these elements by both hands. And uh, they've been talking of, with international support and all of that experienced groups coming to help humanitarian you know, agencies that are supporting intercommunal dialogue. And people are rebuilding bridges. It, Southern Kaduna hadn't been like this before itself. The story was told, I've heard of one Fulani, itinerant Fulani man who uh, was living a given community in southern Kaduna and was so trusting of his neighbor. The Fulani being Muslim, a Christian neighbor, left behind a son of his with this neighbor and said, care for my son while we go. This southern Kaduna person looked for a Muslim school, the Quranic school, for the child to be taught because the children don't go to that school. In fact, the Fulani man did not, as it happened, left and went and never really came back to that community. This uh, Southern Kaduna gentleman raised this child as a Muslim in his, the choice of his own parents until the young man became educated and graduated from university before he reunited with his family. These are communities that had lived with one another for a long time. A lot has happened. So the things that are going on, there's a lot of criminality, there's a lot of uh, injustice that needs to be corrected. Politics is also coming in. And when politics and security mix, you have a lot of problems. What precisely is going on in Kaduna? I mean, from what, I don't know, what is safe to disclose? Because I, I want to believe that, well, I think we'll, we will answer this question when we return from the break uh, because you know there are definitely many layers to it there are definitely many theories around it but from the understanding of the presidency it will be good to have their perspective when we return from this break to join us again mm -hmm.